Were you ever in a relationship with a toxic person that just wanted to take a break? I'm not talking about uh, people on the friend set with like Ross and Rachel like taking a break, but the concept there of sometimes you'll have someone in your life that wants to take a break, but with a narcissist, what's that actually mean? And what's that look like? If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, the creator of the NARC app, and your guide in the 45-day Clarity Challenge that you can access at claritychallenge.net. We're on this channel to try to help educate people about narcissism, narcissistic abuse, and share some of my story in my journey of narcissism and help people understand. If you like what you see here, please subscribe and please hit that notification so you can see when we drop new videos, when we go live on the platform, when we host different events. We'd love to have you part of the community and help be an effect in your healing and helping you move forward. Well, today in talking about the aspect of the mindset of the, the ideas about behind the aspect of like, hey, let's just take a break. Let's just, you know, separate for a period of time. Let's just take a pause on our relationship. And I want to give you a little bit of insight about it and then also some ideas of like how to approach it, okay? Narcissists that want to take a break. Now, you might be on one side or the other of you know the Friends episodes of like Ross or Rachel, which was actually right. Were they on a break? Were they not on the break? Okay. Um, but when we're talking about taking a break, we're typically looking at the tough spots in a relationship where the relationship is really, really struggling or there's like a really bad interaction going on. Typically, you have an aspect of on a normal couple, maybe bad communication, maybe having some issues, you know, maybe needing to get into therapy, like multiple things. When we're talking about a narcissist, a lot of times we see a pattern of this either take a break aspect or just the toxicity ramping up to get to a place of taking a break. Maybe you were a part of this relationship where you're on and then off, like together, then not together, like always back and forth. And it produces this addiction level to this person because of the intermittent reinforcement, the highs and the lows, the ups and downs, the positive, the negative. It makes you really confused about what's real and what's going on. A lot of times in dealing with a narcissist, we'll see people that have had relationships that are really like, I don't even know how to define this. Like, are we together? Are we not together? And it goes back and forth really quick. Well, in dealing with this aspect, you have relationships that get to a point where it's like, we need to separate, we need to take a break. And it seems like the only option at that point is to separate or is to pause the relationship. Now, sometimes you have the aspect of someone who wants to pause or take a break to be able to work on themselves, to be able to focus on life, and sometimes it's not as upfront. Well, when you think about the aspect of taking a break and like releasing that other person, there's an aspect that a lot of times people ask me of like, why would a narcissist actually give up that control? Because in the relationship, they have an aspect of power and control over the other person. Like from a narcissist perspective, why would they give up that control? Well, from that aspect, the narcissist that wants to take a break oftentimes is the aspect that they already found someone else. Like, let's take a break so that we can work on ourselves, aka I go cheat and I go do something with someone else. It's typically an aspect of like this, like, wait, let's go ahead and, and build a different perspective or a different story in the direction that I want to go versus reality versus the truth. Now, typically, this is an aspect that the narcissist is trying to hide. It's not necessarily something like, like, hey, let's take a break and let's see other people. Oftentimes, it's just a completely different direction that they end up going. But when we're talking about them giving up control, it's like, I found someone else. I'm building a new narrative that I'm going to go with. I found a new direction that I'm going to turn to. And oftentimes, this is an aspect of running from accountability and responsibility. Now, in a narcissistic relationship, a lot of it is shame avoidance. It's the avoidance of those ugly feelings, the guilt, the shame, the, and all those different pieces that it's like, ah, I don't want to feel that. I'd rather put it on someone else. I'd rather project it on you. I'd rather blame it. I'd rather run, I'd rather rage, anything like that. And a lot of times, let's take a break is an avoidance of that accountability piece or that responsibility. It could be something that you've started to hold them accountable or to a whole other standard. They're like, oh. Yeah, we need to take a break. I need to figure out some other plans here so I can get out of this relationship. Well, like I kind of alluded to earlier, oftentimes taking a break from a narcissistic standpoint means, hey, it's time to go find someone else. 
Now, this aspect can be really confusing because there'll be double standards here. But what we'll see is when a narcissist goes and takes a break or, you know, we separate to work on ourselves, it's not really the aspect of like, hey, let's not have anyone in our life. Let's focus on introspection and therapy and journaling. It's not that. It's like take a break from the accountability and responsibility to go be with someone else. Oftentimes, taking a break from a narcissist reproductive is the aspect of cheating. There's not a ton of leeway that I've seen. And typically when a narcissist is like taking a break and stepping away from the relationship, they are stepping away from the relationship and going to another person. And what happens is, is like, let's go ahead and break away from these things and then do whatever I want to do and then come back. Sometimes then, then there's the aspect of coming back and you get involved with someone or you go out with someone and it's game over. Okay, because then they'll turn around on you and be like, oh my gosh, you cheated on me. We took a break and you're the one that cheated. You'll find so many times a narcissist will take a break, go be with 20 different people, come back and you look sideways at one person. They're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you cheated on me. Like the, the double standard is very, very accelerated because the avoidance of shame, of guilt, of accountability, of responsibility. Okay, so... When you're going into a break with a narcissist, so maybe you're at the place where you think, I think we need to separate. I think we need to walk through this. Like we need to actually like take a step back. When you're going through this, you need to understand these things to start off with, okay? One, they're probably gonna cheat on you or they already have. Typically, we've already seen this pattern in the relationship. Maybe you've already seen them with someone. Maybe they've already been communicating nonstop with other people and they need to take a break to figure it out. No, they need to take a break in that sense to be able to figure out what story they're going to tell people so that they look like the good person and you look like the bad person so that they look like they didn't cheat and they can blame something on you. Like all that is is just a facade. So no, going into you being with a narcissist and them wanting to take a break just know that they're probably gonna cheat on you or they already have and this is the next step for them to be able to fulfill more of their desires without you standing over them with the accountability and with the responsibility. Second thing is going into a break with a narcissist, know that double standards will be in place, 100%. In that regard, don't expect much. Don't expect much to come out of it because of the aspect that the standards are not going to be the same for both people. You might go into it being like, okay, but we're not going to see anybody or we're not going to engage with you know X, Y, and Z or we're going to work on this or we're going to focus in this area and you'll find that none of the work really gets done on the other side. But if you don't do the work, then that narrative changes to be like you don't care about the relationship and that you're not willing to actually do the work to, to work on them and then they can phrase that to other people. This is why we're separated because so-and-so wouldn't do the work. They wouldn't actually put in. They were cheating on me. Then they start blaming you for a lot of things that you didn't do. So understand that the double standards will be in place. Don't expect much. Now, the third thing is, is it is an opportunity for you to focus on yourself. Like in all aspects, when we talk about narcissistic abuse, there has to be a point that it flips. There has to be a point where the focus on them switches to a focus on you and you're able to heal, grow, and change. And so going into this, you need to like take a different look of like, hey, not the fact of like, oh my gosh, I'm so sad that we're broken up. That is there and there is a piece of that. But then there's an aspect of like, wait a second. Now I have less toxicity in my life, less time dealing with the toxicity. I can focus on me. I can focus on my growth, my healing, my change, my development. That's when you need to start pouring into you. You have an opportunity at this point to get free and to focus on you. All right, number four, a lot of times they will walk back in at the end of taking a break thinking that all is the same. You'll see this a lot of times in arguments and situations where you like butt heads and then they come back five minutes later and they're like, what do you want for supper? And it doesn't even seem to phase them partly because they want to minimize that conflict. They want to minimize the fact that it mattered to you and make you feel like you're the crazy one. But what happens oftentimes when you separate and you come back together is oftentimes the narcissist is like, nothing's changed, we're totally fine. But at that point, there's also no work that's been done on their behalf on both, both areas, like together, to actually establish a new relationship. All right, last thing is oftentimes they will blame you for the break. They'll be like, you're the one that won the break. And you're like, no, I didn't even ask for that. They'll twist it around. 
Because if that break looks like a bad thing, they can't own it. They can't hold on to it. It has to be someone else's idea. It has to be someone else's thought. It can't be theirs. Last but not least, a lot of times they'll take a break to have an affair or to cheat on you or to put the blame on you. You need to understand if you're going through this, there's an aspect that you're struggling with. Maybe you've already taken a break and you're struggling with the aspect of the trauma bond. Of you know mentally, like, this is a good thing. I can work on myself. This is okay. But emotionally, like, oh, I just want to go back to them. Like, I just want to interact with them. Even I know that they're toxic. You're dealing with a trauma bond. You're dealing with that piece that's addiction and that's stuck. And so reach out for help whether that's getting into therapy, whether that's working with a coach one-on-one, like working through that process is absolutely essential for you to get clear about who you are. I work with people every single day to help them break the trauma bond, get through the rumination, and get clear about their boundaries and help them move forward. If you're interested in talking one-on-one, interacting, developing with coaching, anything like that, you can go to rawmotivations.com. You can click on the one-on-ones. You can see some of the services we offer to try to be able to help you move forward and progress in your healing, in your growth, and in your change.